This is running on Intel Silicon. The first derivative was based on Batrail. Uh, the second derivative is actually based on Apollo Lake. And uh, you know, we're excited about where this product is going to go. So again, Advantech's role in this was to be the hardware provider or the ODM uh, to bring this product to market. If you look at Advantech and where we're going, I think there's some synergies between you know, GE. I mean, GE is a $117 billion company. We're only uh, $1.2 billion. But what the synergy is, is that digital transformation as a company. So we had to take our products as being a hardware provider and find value add and what we could do in uh, putting elements of the software and services to bring IoT solutions to market. And this is actually a slide uh, that our CTO, Alan Yang, uh, presented um, at our World Partner Conference last year. And I wanted to share it with you because it really highlights the digital transformation that I think all of us here at IDF need to go through in order to be able to be successful in IoT and smart city applications. So you can see here, this is Jeff Elmwood's words. If you went to bed last night as an industrial company, you're going to wake up this morning as a software analytics company. He addressed this directly to GE at the Minds and Machines in 2014. And Advantech's model is enabling an intelligent plan. In order to do that, we had to make a digital transformation. We call this the butterfly effect. It's really going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's really truly making a transformation from a hardware-only company to a company that can bring software and some services. And the only way we can do that is through our ecosystem. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is this transformation, this digital transformation that we've gone through. So that Moon Island platform that I mentioned, the gateway that we created with Intel, that started actually in 2013. We brought it to market in 2014, really started to have a lot of marketing efforts behind it in 2015. And you can see some of the different levels of operating system, middleware, firmware, uh, and actually as you added the edge intelligence software like Predix onto our platforms to be able to resonate with the market. And this is actually the only way that you're going to shorten the gap to an IoT world, whether it's in smart cities or it's in industrial 4.0 or it's in some other industrial uh, IoT application. You have to have ecosystem partners. So Advantech over the last several years has worked diligently to build up this ecosystem. And this ecosystem today is, is highlighted in this, in this current project with GE, the success that we've had with the GE Digital team, the success we've had with Intel, AT&T, bringing these partnerships to market. It's the only way that we can bring these type of products uh, to, to fruition. So if you look at the IoT platform, it's kind of an eye chart here, I apologize. But really, if we look at our business, our model is taking the product from southbound side of the gateway to northbound. How do we instrument those assets? And Advantech has worked, again, collaborating with different RF manufacturers uh, to be able to instrument those assets on the southbound side, uh, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, uh, any, any, uh, north, any other IoT uh, protocol. Uh, we're actually working to put those RF signals into our sensor node and be able to interface with the gateways and then be able to put solution-ready software on the gateway so that you can actually start your PMC uh, quicker and get to market sooner. So if you look at the IoT architecture, again, it looks complex, but I think the thing that we want to highlight today is that with Advantech, we're nimble, we're agile, we're able to work with different ecosystem partners to bring these type of smart city applications to market. And we're excited about where this is going with GE and the current team. And at &T. One of the things, if you'd like to learn more about Advantech and how we can partner with you on your IoT application or your Smart Cities application, we'd encourage you to come visit us in our Linko Smart Campus. Uh, this is actually a facility that's been open since 2014, and we'll actually be opening uh, Phase 2 uh, next month, which is a smart factory. It's a six-story factory. It'll be fully automated have uh, basically a blueprint for our customers and our partners to be able to take those building blocks and plug them into their facilities. And two dates that I wanted to highlight, we will have our World Partner Conference in Taiwan. Uh, again, we encourage you if you're in the area, if you're in Asia, in Taiwan, uh, be able to visit these, uh, these, these excellent opportunities to learn more. And 
you can contact me uh, via my web email or uh, phone. Thank you very much. And I'll hand it over to Jordan. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Jory Mendel from AT&T Smart Cities. AT&T Smart Cities is actually a part of our Internet of Things organization at AT&T. We were founded in September of last year with the idea that, for the most part, 40% uh, of cities that have a population of 100,000 or more are operating on pipes that are more than 40 years old. That can mean a lot of big trouble for cities. So we are coming in and we are looking at the big problems that are facing cities today and figuring out how can we bring solutions to fix some of those problems. So what are we doing? AT&T has developed a framework to help address some of the needs of cities. So cities are being overpopulated today. Actually, the UN estimates that 60% of people will live in cities by 2030. But some big cities today, such as Dallas, already have upwards of 85% of people living there. So that means extra drain on the infrastructure. That means also public safety is of utmost importance. And we've got to do all this while keeping sustainability in mind. So those are the key factors that are driving the growth of cities, and that is what we at set and with our ecosystem of partners, are trying to come in and help solve and plan. Not just looking at today or tomorrow, but how can we complete a robust, holistic strategy to take cities that are, let's call them dumb cities, and make them smart, right? So many of the components exist today in cities. We heard a lot about lighting and how many light poles there are, et cetera. This is the framework that AT&T has developed. Connectivity is what AT&T, that's where we started, right? That is the golden thread of a smart city. If you don't have connectivity, again, you're not putting in intelligent, smart solutions and services. So we can do that from LTE to fiber to low power. Depending on what the solution is, we'll bring the right connectivity with the right partner to meet the right needs of that city at the right time. Technology platforms. This again is where we talk about technology platforms such as data aggregation with our m 2 Flow that we've developed. Um, and that is an opportunity for developers to come and use our tools and bring products to market faster to benefit cities. Also, it's all about getting real-time access to data. We agree completely with GD. It is all about the data, right? We are making smart cities a part why people care about smart cities is the data, so they can make informed decisions that help their cities function better and ultimately deliver that better life for the citizens that live there. So that's a huge component of our smart cities framework. The third pillar is vertically integrated solutions. I'll get into those in a bit more detail on my next slide. And lastly, it's a collaborative effort, right? I think you've heard, if there was any theme that came through today with us on the stage, it's collaboration. We need big partners, we need the developers in the communities, and we need those startups all to come together with one unified vision of how they can make their city smarter. And so that's, we've developed an ecosystem so far. We have nine partners, GE, Intel, several others being part of that ecosystem where we can go into cities together, we can speak with the mayors, we can speak with the departments as a unified front that we can bring a holistic strategy versus bringing in one-off solutions. So that's really at and role in smart cities and, and our vision of where we're going. So I mentioned one of the pillars is vertically integrated solutions. So these are the five categories of vertically integrated solutions that we focus on. So utilities and energy. I'll just call out you know, an example from each. That would be where we would have smart lighting solutions. It could also be water management. So that could be anything from smart irrigation. So if you think about a lot of the parks in today's world, they are operating on old meters, meaning they have to be adjusted manually. But with smart irrigation, that is automated. And think about that. They can also account for the changes in season, the exact kind of tree or grass you want to water, and they can make those changes automatically. So saving, ultimately, billions of gallons of water. That's one example. Also, there's technology that we leverage that can detect a leak on a huge water pipe and know exactly where it, where it was with precision, so you can launch and dispatch a team out there to fix that immediately. So again, thinking of all these things and how can we work with the existing infrastructure but enhance it so that we are more informed and the cities can make better decisions moving forward. Second pillar is transportation. 
I don't know where everybody came from, but I'm sure it was a journey, right? Even if you live in this city. Imagine a day where you literally wake up, your app tells you the bus is running five minutes late, it pings you again when the bus is there. You get you get to the bus stop, it's a connected bus stop, you have Wi-Fi, you have you know a screen that tells you all the latest news, everything's going smoothly. It even allows you to buy the ticket for the show or the movie that you're going to, all in one app. You get on the, the bus, the bus is connected, the bus automatically reroutes to get around traffic, then you arrive at your venue. Again, your app, you already have your ticket, you might have even pre-bought a glass of wine, right? 